to another episode of the Fan Zone Podcast. Your home for all things Bolton Wanderers, up the trotters, the Northwest's number one podcast. Hello and welcome back to another Fan Zone Podcast video. This is episode three of our top five Bolton Wanderers moments. Um, we're here with the eagerly anticipated Chris Dawson. After uh, the two babies had their their go first time round, <laughs> uh, it's time for some proper, proper real memories and moments to get brought up. So, Chris, the floor is yours. Thanks, mate. Yeah, it was it was difficult, really difficult, because just for a bit of background, I started following Bolton back in 1986, which to a lot of you know, obviously yourself, to Ben, to the Ben, um, you know, it, it, is a, it is more than a lifetime ago. So it's, um, yeah, hopefully um, this will resonate with a different sort of section of our viewer base, as it were. So, and it's, you know what, it's so hard, obviously, having like close on 40 years of, of memories of following Bolton, some good, some bad, some obviously pivotal in terms of the, the club's trajectory, whether that be upwards and downwards. Yeah, tough one. Um, so I'm going to go number five. I'm going to go with the most recent, um, which was not a game as such, it was the celebrations after a game, and that was the um, the return of the team to the the hotel at the ground post the Crawley victory, which obviously got us promoted from League Two under Ian Ever. Um, it's a weird one in the sense that obviously there were there were so many highs and lows. Obviously that season. We were sat 19th at the turn of the year and things were looking, yeah, very, very precarious. And the previous week, we'd spurned an opportunity to go up at home by beating Exeter. Um, obviously, famous for the fireworks and Thogdad saying it tastes like promotion and all that. And it, it, it <laughs> failed uh, on that occasion. Um, but why it stands out for me is the fact that obviously we never saw that team. Every game was played behind closed doors, so it was the 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 I follow season. So it was a really surreal kind of experience seeing the players for the first time. Um, so there were a good few thousand outside the hotel uh, waiting for the coach to come back, which arrived back late. The players were absolutely well oiled after driving back on the coach from Crawley, as you'd imagine. Um, but we can cut to a video of that, which I uh, captured on the phone. <laughs> Right on, man! 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 Right on,
and it re- sort of captures the experience, really, doesn't it? That, um, but yeah, it, it got to the stage where there were so many people there that the police couldn't get the coach onto the car park. There were <laughs> there were pyros everywhere, people jumping on the coach. Yeah. So he had to go out the car park and back round and back round and back round. Um, and then it disappeared for for a while. And then the next thing we know, the first um, glimpse of the players was MJ Williams was the first one to come running out of the, the hotel, literally diving into the fans like a like a huge mosh pit. It was um, it was a hell of an experience. One I'll I'll never forget for all the sort of circumstances that led to it being so so unique. So yeah, number five for me was the Crawley promotion homecoming party. Yeah, it um, was special that um it was I mean I was there that night as well. It was as you say, it was a whole season, 46 games where every game it was just for me, it was just me and my dad watching it. And it was like we were the only people in the yeah. crowd. That was it. We were just watching a team that you know we couldn't you know couldn't properly connect to because we hadn't seen them in person. We weren't yeah. there celebrating. And it was the first time we were there. First time you're there with thousands of the Bolton fans in over a year, over about eighteen months mm. at that point, and also yeah, it was, of course, and it yeah. was, and it was unbelievable, wasn't it? Yeah, and I've got a, obviously I've got a permanent memento just behind me there. Oh yes, which is the shirt worn by Lloyd Grove when he got the fourth. So yeah, so yeah, it, it was like you say, same for me. It was me and my son Sam um and my dog that was probably traumatized after that <laughs> season screaming at the tv jumping around the living room after you know snatching it at, at the death at mansfield and all that it was a uh, yeah there were so many emotions that season so that really kind of capped it off number four was beating manchester united away back to back um, which was in the 2001, 2002, and 2002 to 2003 season. Um, obviously, you think about that United team that was phenomenal. Scholes, Keane, Beckham, Veron, Nicky Butt. The list goes on and on and on. They were they were a phenomenal outfit. And obviously, the, two, the first away win was... Uh, first season back up uh, October 2001 you know earlier that season we you know we we got off to a hell of a start we beat Leicester in the first game back in the Premier League um, away at Filbert Street we beat them 5 nil. we beat Liverpool earlier that season so we we kind of you know, really sort of introduced ourselves again back to the Premier League. But this was special for me because tickets for the away end at Old Trafford were at a premium. So me and my mate Lee were sat <laughs> in the upper tier of the Stretford end <laughs> amongst, amongst the tourists. So it was it was very, very, very challenging. We went 1-0 down to a Juan Sebastian Veron free kick in the first half. And it was looking really, really daunting. Mm. Um, they'd lost earlier that week in Europe against Deportivo, I think it may have been. So Ferguson had obviously uh, rung, rung the changes and wanted a response. Uh, and Veron gave it. With a, it was an unbelievable free kick. Um, but 10 minutes before half time, we, we started opening up and we were playing some amazing football and we equalised with a move that was finished off by Kevin Nolan from just on the edge of the box past Bartes. A beautiful goal. If you go back and search it on YouTube, it's an absolute peach of a move with a beautiful finish. And then in the second half, it was a United onslaught. You'll see was unreal. There's 
the game's really, really sort of famous for a double save that he made. Um, I think it was Skulls and Andy Cole that had two shots in very quick succession, which Yossi got down to. The second one for Cole was just ridiculous. He was already down for the first shot and he managed to get to his feet and save Cole's effort. And then with six minutes to go, the ball broke to Michael Ricketts. He got through one-on-one -on -one with Bartes and slightly passed him 2-1. Um, and it was just, it's one of those, it was a, just a really surreal moment. It's like a pinch me moment. Is this really happening? Um, and it was just crazy. And I remember thinking, myself and my mate, we, we'd obviously had a couple of beers to, Settle the nerves that we managed to sort of restrain ourselves from celebrating. Um, when the reality is that a mate of mine who was a season ticket holder at United had actually spotted us at half time and he said, You were anything but restrained, oh, you didn't get chucked out, I'll never know. So, <laughs> great memories. And then to go back the following season, we were in the in with the Wanderers fans this time and we were actually sat just two rows behind John McGinley funnily enough um, and it was it was a bit more of a drab affair but we, we managed to get a win 1-0 Nolan again 76 minutes there was a mistake in the box I think it was Nicky Butt and David Beckham were sort of dawdling on the ball in the box Beckham skewed his clearance it fell to kev nolan and he slightly bartez past bartez in the 76 minute um and it it was you know it, to do it two seasons on the bounce yeah in their backyard was just an experience i'll never forget um so yeah number four for me is beating united back to back in the premier league at old trafford number three um was the um our promotion the season before coming back into the premier league so in the playoff final it's it's weird how these kind of like map out in chronological order apart from obviously the crawley um homecoming if you will um but yeah the, the season before as we got back to the premier league we beat preston at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff um, to get promoted back into the Premier League. Obviously, Big Sam, it marked the sort of, you know, the, the beginning of that Big Sam era. Um, phenomenal weekend. We ended up in a hotel close by. We stayed over for the weekend and we ended up in a hotel full of Preston fans. I think we, we were the only Bolton fans in there. So <laughs> imagine that obviously the um, the after the game going back to the hotel was phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, it was a, a great weekend. I mean, just to put it into context, obviously, you know, it's one of the biggest games in, in world football back then, which was two thousand the end of the 2001 season. The value of that game was at what 30 million quid to the winner it's just huge but still there was only about fifty four and a half thousand on and you think about wembley and the papa johns against plymouth you know it, it it's it, it's crazy really yeah. um but yeah it, it was one of those games very much like plymouth it was like the perfect weekend the result, everything around it, which was, was just the perfect storm. So that season, we finished third on 87 points. Fulham went up on 101. Um, we beat West Brom in the semi-final um, and then obviously played Preston in the final. Um, probably more for the older viewers, but I guess even for, 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 for younger viewers, when you think about club legends, so the game was watched by Sanat, um, and Tom Finney was also there representing Preston. Mm. So it, it, the the whole kind of 
you know, the stage was set, you know what I mean? It, there was hit, yeah. it was steeped in history. Um, it was a really, really close game despite the result. We went 1 0 up in the first half, Gary Farrelly scored. Um, and then it was 1 0 till um, the 89th minute. Ricketts was brought on by Big Sam. He scored in the 89th. And then to wrap it up in stoppage time, Ricardo Gardner rounded the keeper to make it 3 0. And David Moyes was their manager then. So just to give you. Yeah, a bit more of uh, an idea of, of sort of time timelines and how things have changed and moved on. Um, yeah, it was Big Sam versus Moisey. So, mm. but uh, yeah, br- just a brilliant weekend. It really, really was. Number two, and it was really difficult not putting the Plymouth Papa John's victory in there. The reason being is I'd already seen us win at Wembley in in the same tournament. And I'll just give you a bit of background to that. So number two for me was the first time that I ever saw the Wanderers win at Wembley. Um, And that was in 1989 um, when we beat Torquay United in what was then the um the sherpa van trophy back then so it was the leyland daff it was the sherpa van it was the freight rover in that and obviously now it's the bristol street Mo- motors trophy after yeah. being the papa john so it's it's always been a tournament that's changed its name like you and i change our socks so <laughs> um and it, the victory was made extra special. As I said, my first season was 86, and we got to Wembley that season uh, in the same tournament when it was the Freight Rover. Uh, we lost 3 0 to Bristol City, and it was an absolute, oh, it was a killer. It was mm-hmm. our first time at Wembley for a very, very long time. There was a massive amount of hype around it, and we got smashed 3 0. So to go back three years later, um, we went into the game on a, a, a phenomenal winning streak, a nine, uh, uh, well, unbeaten streak, should I say, of 19 games. So we were in a rich vein of form and we went 1 0 down. Um, and I, what I remember it really, really distinctly it was absolutely baking hot. It was like 92 degrees at pitch side, I seem to remember. There's a famous article, an interview with Phil Brown, um, who was then our number two, um, uh, our fullback. Um, he lost six and a half kilos in that game. Wow. In one game, which is obviously the equivalent Jesus. to like a Formula One driver these days. It was, it yeah. was just, it was absolutely baking out. It was a beautiful day. But yeah, we were, despite our form, um we went one nil down so it was oh no it's happening again kind of thing um but we went on to take the game by the scruff of the neck and we we won the we won the game 4-1 um dean crombie um jeff chandler i think scored john thomas which people still laugh at that name. Um, but it was rounded off by the fourth, which was scored by our striker at the time, a guy called Trevor Morgan, who was nicknamed Sumo. Um, he, he wasn't the slimmest of, of strikers, hence the nickname. Um, and when he scored, he did this. Obviously, you see players like Randell doing the somersaults and what have you, and Marlon Fossey and whatnot. He did a a forward roll very badly to celebrate the fourth <laughs> goal. But it was a, a brilliant occasion seeing your, your team win at Wembley for the first time. Yeah, it was phenomenal. We finished 10th yeah. that season under Phil Neal. And there's so many parallels that you can draw between Phil Neal back then and Ian Everett now in terms of yeah. promotion from what was the fourth division and then winning 
a piece of silver wire in what was then the the um the sherpa van trophy or the freight rover trophy and then obviously you never win in the papa john's it's there's so many parallels it's it's yeah. uncanny number one and this is a blast from the past um and it was our promotion from what was then division four which is equivalent to when we got promoted from league two mm. uh to division three um at the first time of asking um the previous season we've been relegated to division four um after a defeat in the playoffs against Aldershot another team that's gone by the wayside um yeah. and it went down to the last game of the season so this is a 1988 season it was away at Wrexham at what was then the race course mm. um I think there were only 6,000 on if you look at official statistics it claims there are only 6,000 on I I beg to differ there is a really <laughs> grainy video on YouTube of the of the limbs after we scored the winner, which was scored by a player we had at the time called Robbie Savage, not to be confused with the uh, yeah, he's a now a pundit and a Macclesfield formerly of Leicester, but we had our own Robbie Savage and he scored the winner in the 78th minute. Um, and I have never still to this day experienced crowd scenes like it obviously it was never you know th th they were never created you know people weren't filming it on mobile phones and i said like, proper old no don't i but <laughs> it, these these were genuine and honestly it was just chaos. genuine emotion yeah yeah it, it to to give it as i say you can find the clip on youtube um but it was a, a really <clears throat> traditional terrace with the seated area behind it um and people to this day will talk about how people from the seats above literally fell over it doesn't sound great obviously given obviously yeah. you know things like hillsborough and crowd safety and whatnot but it was so full that people were just caught but they were yeah. spilling out from the top tier people were on the pitch um and it was the game that really brought dave higson to the fore um obviously he's commemorated in the fan zone but dave was our commentator on the match day videos as they were then um yeah. so you had to buy a, a, a video cassette of the game um and obviously his catchphrase was what a ding dong do <laughs> which was somewhat tarnished by paddy mcginnis referring to it as a ding dang do yeah so never understood put, that yeah yeah well let's put the record straight now paddy mcginnis yeah. it's never been a ding dang do it's a ding dong do um mm. and it was made famous during that game by dave higson who was commentating uh another line was when the bolton fans got on the pitch um he commented that the police are acting like pigs so to speak <laughs> It was, um, yeah, it, it, it was his sort of springboard to fame. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, it was uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal day. So that season, Wolves went up as champions. Cardiff was second and we finished third um, above Scunthorpe and Torquay by one point. And there was a one goal. We, we were one goal behind them in goal difference wow. so that's how tight it was yeah, and we got the wow. winner in the 78th minute so as you can imagine the the ecstasy in that away end was yeah. just something and it you know i think the reason why it, it is my number one moment is because despite the fact that it's you know it, it's all that time ago going on for 40 years ago it still sticks with me and it's still really really clear in my mind yeah. to this day um and yeah I, I don't think i'll see a day like that again because it was unreal well there you have it uh chris dawson's top five bolton wanderers moments uh 
bit of a blast from the past for a few of them. I'm sure they uh, well, resonate with that. them. Just about. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm sure that resonates with a a lot a lot more Bolton fans. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, obviously, we've recently hit a thousand subscribers. A massive thank you to everyone who's helped us do that. Um, we will have some more content in the members only area. So if you want to get involved, it's three quid a month. Uh, the link is down below. You'll get a special little badge uh, next to your name when you comment in the comment section or when you comment on the live chat. Um, and you'll get some extra content uh, we'll make sure it's worth your while so uh, if you don't you can just subscribe uh, you'll see all the all the free content we put out including our live streams every Thursday and Sunday and yeah th once again thank you for watching if you have any more ideas of top fives or like any other different uh, content you want us to see um, pop it in the comments below and we'll sure get to it sure to get to it and also uh, put your top five uh, moments in the comments down below. We'd see how they compare to um, compare to all of us here. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching uh, and up the whites.